My name is Cassie Summers. Welcome to the Curious Universe podcast. Welcome, welcome to the Curious Universe podcast. I am your host, Cassie Summers, and I am so grateful that you are here today. We are going to talk about creation and oh, creation actually fires me up. I'm a massive creator. I, I am one of those people that have 10,000 ideas every day, all the time. I, I've often been um, told you should sell your ideas because you have too many. You'll never complete them. You never bring them on to actualization this lifetime. Um, I, I love, I love the energy of creation. For me, it's, it's like living. It's the, the life, the living, it's the fuel of, um, of what kind of drives me in a sense. This is why I like being a business owner. I find business is a playground for creation. It's this magical, wonderful playground where I get to create constantly and, uh, oh, so much fun. So but I'm not just talking about creation today. I wanted to actually talk about timing and creation. As a creator, sometimes, and if you're a creator, you might know this, you might have experienced this very thing, is that we get so excited about our creations and they're almost, they're almost like very, it can be very um, intimate. It could be, it, you could have like such affection and adoration for particular creations. You feel so connected to them. And um, so when you have some of these creations going, and especially when it really fuels you, it fires you, you feel more alive and you just can't wait to gift this to the world. So if that's you, if that's ever occurred for you, you might be the kind of person that then just puts it out into the world and forgets to ask, when would this like to be out in the world? Because this is something I do. And I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> what if creations have consciousness? They can talk to you. So for example, it could be a book. Okay, you're creating a book and all the words are flowing and you're writing it and maybe it pours onto the page with total ease and you find the editor and you find all the, and it's just like, duh, 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 duh. and what if you could still ask the question to the book, hey, when would you like to be in the world? When would you like, so here's the thing, why would you ask the book that? This is, I can hear someone's head right now. Why would you ask the book that? Well, the book has a consciousness. So the book, it has a sense, not to negate your sense, but it also has a sense of when the space for its actualization will create the most. Now you can have that awareness too, but often we have some points of view going on like, oh, but this would be really great right now. And I love it. Here, I'm going to use an example, actually, my own business. So um, one of my amazing designers created, she had like this hit on something and she created the start of this, this beautiful graphic and landing page. And it was fall into magic. And that was kind of it. And and, and handed it to me. And so then as I started to kind of acquaint myself with the energies and play with them, I got, I got aware of this really cool energy, these cool uh, energies of magic that seem to show up at different seasons. So then in this create meeting, we start going, what about, what if we did a series? We did the seasons of magic. We could do a fall. We could do winter, spring, summer. We could like play with this whole thing. And, um, 
And then things just started to fall into place. I got the videos done right away. So I did a video series. I did a um, energetic journey to, and so, so when we asked questions, we thought it was going to be like a class, but it actually wanted to be a product. So we created this beautiful product. It's got a landing page. It's got all these things came so quickly with so much ease. And then there, there was this energy of like, eh, uh, 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 stop slow. Eh, uh, and it wasn't the last little bits just weren't going and they weren't going. And now fall's coming to an end. We're getting towards winter right now. It's there's beautiful snow floating down, touching the ground in my area. Did we miss the window? Where's the, the energy of fall? It's shifting. So we were, we were asking questions about it in another create meeting. And I don't like putting things off. So I am, I am a person that loves action. And my sense is um, it is, it is action It is action that's required for a lot of things to come into the world. And I, I, in my commitment to my life and my commitment to consciousness, I am one to always go, okay, what action do I need to take here? I'm not the person that sits down and just expects things to show up and then gets disappointed when they don't show up. So I've been like looking at taking action, taking action, taking action. And then someone asked me the question, this question is always create more awareness. What if this actually wants to come up next fall? Oh, this hit my point of view. So my point of view was we pretty much have it done. How could we wait a year? We should take action. All these things coming up, right? Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. So then I asked the creation, hey, would you actually like to be launched next year? So light. Wow. So I know because I'm powerful enough that I could force it. I could force it into existence and push it out in the next day or two. Yet force with creation is not, it, for me, it's never yielded the results that I know are possible. Seduction with creation, play with creation, the joy of creation always does. So this new sense of joy started to come up in looking at, whoa, we could have a whole year to to even create this to be even greater to expand it and to to play with different possibilities with it and to also invite the world to it in a different and unique way if we gave it space and allowed it to tell us when is the time so where have you where have you used force with creation rather than the space of when is the space with creation? <laughs> so those may have been a bunch of words that made no sense, but I, I know you got the energy of it. Now you might not have a business. Maybe you don't create in that way. Maybe it's for you. It's a painting. It, it might be um, different ways that you create. It might be the way you create friendships. You create relationships. You want, you want to like rocket ship this relationship, but this relationship is not it is not going at the speed that you'd like it to go. So you use force and you try and push it rather than, hey, when is the space for this? Yeah. Yeah. So I've been really looking at this a lot more in, in my own business. Um, we just had the most brilliant um, concept come out. And I'll tease it a little bit for you, but I got to tell you, you're going to have to wait a year because it's actually asking. So some of the creations coming to me, these bigger, more elaborate creations, and they're asking for a a year of energy of, of, of building the platform. 
And so, so this particular thing is going to be a, um, a story compilation put to video about Christmas and the magic of the winter wonderland and and the magical creatures connected to all of this. And so we were looking at it and we're like, okay. And so the question we asked and be aware of the questions that you ask, because the question that you ask will give you the awareness to what you're asking, but some questions will give you a um, limited scope of awareness. And then you ask a different question and it will give you a bigger scope of awareness. So the questions we asked is, can we do this? And we got, yes, we can do this before Christmas. So our awareness was based on the question, can we do this? Now I started to to ponder this, when is the space thing? So then I asked the creation, hold on a minute. So we know that we can do this and creation when would you like to come into actualization? Is it this Christmas? Nope. Is it next Christmas? Big, 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 big energy, like explosive, like, whoa, which is what I tend to, I like the, I like, it's like, go bigger, go bigger. (laughs) I, I love the, the space of intensity of living. And that's part of what creation for me is. So asking it, really allowing it to show you so that you can get out of your own point of view. And, and, and it's funny because our, our, we also have all this stuff that we've learned, like the right way, the wrong way. How long does it take? So you might be like, oh, I'd like to do this workshop or I'd like to do this, whatever. Well, typically we need about six months to kind of get it going. That that's like the orders of what you've been told. That's not based on awareness. The awareness was, well, how, when would this class like to be? Okay. You get that awareness. Would, when would we like, when would this class like us to start creating it and getting it going? Okay. Awareness. Do you see the difference? So when, when, is this beautiful dance that you could play with the the universe, you could play with consciousness from a space of no point of view and a space of expanding possibilities. So I look at, again, let's look at this winter wonderland thing. So can we do it this Christmas? Yes, we can do it. And we could have, we could have rallied got it together and launched it. Boom, there it is, cool, we did it. Now, when I look at like the the space of that creation from that place, I'm like, it's pretty good, it's not bad. It's like, it's it's okay. Now, if I look at the adding the, the timing, not time from limitation, not time from the constructs, but from timing, from that, that spacious, magical creation point timing. And when I, when I look at bringing this creation into the world from that, it's so much bigger. Now I have a choice. I can do either one. I'm going for the bigger one. <laughs> I like it. I like the bigger, I like the bigger, more explosive choices. So do you ask your creations when? Hey, when would you like to be actualized? Okay, cool. And that doesn't necessarily mean if it's in a year from now, I now put it on a shelf and I don't do anything about it. No, I I asked, okay, so when would you like to come? When would you like to actualize? I got next winter. And then I asked the question, is there anything you require of me now to start start for the creation of next year. Oh, it's very chatty. This is creations talk to me. So I have a lot of stuff coming up and a lot of awareness of things that can be created now to support that future. And that's part of where you can play with this 
magic of timing. So I talked for a moment, I said creation points, and you may have wondered, what did I mean by that? So I kind of look at it as though these, there'll be a space that will open up. You mean you, so how do I describe that? Um, Notice what right now, whether you're listening to this when it's first released, you're listening to this years later, get a sense of what's going on in your world and the world right now that you're aware of. Okay, cool. So there's a sense of, there's a sense of space. It might be completely undefinable. I'm not asking you to understand it from a cognitive point of view, but you're going to get a sense of what's going on in the world. It might be, um, you know, we've had worldwide financial disasters right now going on. There is a worldwide pandemic where, um, Oh my goodness, there's so much going on for people. And so that is a particular space. Okay. So, so right now, this is the space of the world, which includes my world. And if you're listening to this years later, you're going to have a different space. Even tomorrow, there's going to be a different space. So there's these spaces. Okay. And, and when you're engaging with creations and creation points, there'll be this kind of like opening of space. That's actually this, this, that's what occurred with this podcast. So I've been looking at engaging with wondering about a podcast for probably four years. Now you could say I've been really busy. I didn't have the time. I didn't quite have the format that I wanted, but really it was the space was not there. The space that, that would, would create that bigger opening that, that, um, greater expansion showed up recently. And as soon as I got that sense of the space is now, I was like, oh, okay, let's create this. We already had the logo from like a year ago that we just never used. So we, you know, freshened it up, added it to this thing and just started and everything started to fall together again. So even though things are falling together, you might be actually putting, like creating the platform. It's kind of like sowing the seeds that will allow that creation to bloom, to grow, to sprout years later. And if you had no point of view and you weren't trying to control or force things into existence, you could really allow the the magic and the contribution of all of consciousness. You may have even had, you know, we love, a lot of people love romantic movies. They love comedies. And you see like this, this couple, and maybe it's been like, especially TV series. Oh my God. I swear there's like this rule that you want two people that are desperately desiring to be together, but you can't ever have them truly together. So you just kind of like do this, the whole thing over all the series. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Some, some people break the rules, but there's like, this is like this unsaid rule thing. And it's a little torturous sometimes. But I did acknowledge that what if, what if it wasn't the space? What if it wasn't the timing where, and maybe in your own life, you've met someone and it was, they were already in relationship or you were in relationship. It just wasn't the space and, and there might become a creation point might open up to create something with that person. Could be with friendships where you guys are creating, 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 you're having so much fun. And then they just kind of fade out of your life. And then years later, they come in at this new space as new people with this new possibility of creation. How cool is that? So, so timing, not time itself and the limitations and the, the orders of time, but the, the, the dance of timing can be a wondrous place to play and to be curious about with all of your creations. And if you invited that into more of your creations, I wonder if you would have a lot more ease. 
less trying to force things through <laughs> or what I see other people do is they they'll like let a ball drop because what was really going on is that it was asking for a different um actualization time but they kind of let it drop and then they judge themselves for it what is the space when would you like to come into fruition where's your creation point show me and you might not even get a super clear uh timeline one thing i love to do is i'll open up a year calendar and I'll be, and I'll just kind of, if I sense like, oh, I'd really love to facilitate uh, another foundation class. It's just talking to me and I have a sense of the energies of it and some of the people that are going to be there. And I'm like, oh yes, a foundation class. Okay, cool. So then I'll open up the calendar and I'll zoom out so I can see all the months. And then I'll ask the class, hey, when would you like to actualize? Oh, this month. Okay. Then I go into the month and then I'll, I'll have a sense of like, when can I do it? <laughs> and then, um, and then I, I will go, okay, this weekend, this weekend, this one, this one has, for me, it'll either be like, uh, a bigger energy. I can even, sometimes my body will shake or I'll feel like, this like massive vibration or my body will, it could be different where my body just relaxes and it's like, yes, oh, that's it. It's going to be so amazing. Or sometimes my world just goes really big to space. A million different ways that energy shows up for me. And I'm giving you a few of these to kind of uh, give you something to start to play with in your world. So you can wonder, what is that like for you? When a creation is talking to you, what is that like for you? It will be different for, for all of us. So do you, do you get that sense of space or tingling hands or maybe like, oh, that excited, like loss of breath? And when you ask on a weekend that it doesn't want to be, do you feel like, oh, I feel like I'm going to have to take a nap? <laughs> Or, or like, oh, I don't know. No, no. might just be like, nope, 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 nope. Play with it. Allow yourself to explore how creations talk to you and how your awareness of these creations present themselves and, and open to you. So what play with timing and creations could you truly have? that would actualize the expansion of possibility that you truly desire. I think of even like, um, you know, the Christmas holidays is always a big one. And sometimes people are like, oh, we want to get this out for the holidays. But that's from a conclusion. That's from a, you've decided or concluded that, that this is the answer and this is when you have to do it rather than asking the question. Maybe it, it would, maybe instead of releasing your book a month before Christmas, it, it's gonna have the greatest expansion a month before summer break. But it will not be a cognitive process, as most uh, curious, energetic wonderings are not. <laughs> From that space of consciousness, it is going to bring all the elements of the unknown, the future, and possibilities involving it. Because consciousness is actually that grand. It's actually that infinite. So when you tap into that consciousness and start to speak to it and question and gain awareness and gain choices and gain possibilities, when you explore that curiously, then you will start to create from a different space 
and from a play with timing where you can use timing to create more, more ease, more joy, <laughs> more glory, which is ex exuberant expression of life, abundance. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's so interesting. You sometimes hear artists, whether it's like a musician or a writer, and they're like, they were ahead of their time. And that can show up too. Sometimes you're going to create something and you're going to get a sense to bring it in the world. And it might, it might be ahead of its time, but know that it, it's ready to be in the world because it's ready to be in the world. And the recognition, the acknowledgement of it might not come right away. So you have to, you have to let go of those expectations too. When exploring consciousness, it is easier to gain awareness from no expectations, no projections, no judgments, and true curiosity. Oh, wow. This would like to actualize in a year from now. I wonder. Wonder what I can contribute. I wonder what's possible from that space. Thank you for joining me on the Curious Universe podcast. I truly hope that this was a contribution to you. I would love to hear about some things that you're creating. And if you find the play with timing easy, if you find it difficult, if you'd like more on this, if you'd like to explore different uh, layers and, and elements of creation points <laughs> and creation itself. Um, and please do share this with anyone that you get would like to explore this. What if together we could create a more curious, expansive, conscious world? Thank you. Thank you for exploring the curious universe with me. Your curiosity matters. And what if together we could create greater, more curious world.